The Neustadt Museum of Tiffany Art has been engaged in a multi-year program of conservation for its extensive holdings from the studios of Lewis Comfort Tiffany. Such an effort is a rarity among public collections. The museum carefully selects the expert artisans it entrusts with this work, matching their skills and methods to the chosen subject. In this way, a piece is brought back as closely as possible to its original form and preserved for future generations. Among the more than 100 important objects under the museum's care is Tiffany's Oriental Poppy lampshade. Created about 1910, this shade depicts a bed of yellow oriental poppies tinged with orange and red in the light of a spring afternoon. Once a victim of damage and neglect, today it is a splendid example of Tiffany's design concepts. The oriental poppy regained a dramatic measure of its original form and beauty at a restorer's studio. Staffed by experienced professionals, skilled not only in the processes of restoration, but the art of it. All right, watch that table over there. Yeah. Mm, okay. um. When such work is beyond the scope of the museum conservation staff, the new Stat Museum employs private studios that also do restorations for dealers and collectors. Although the private collector or dealer usually expects total and undetectable repair, the new Stat Museum established very different guidelines for the work done on its collection. Master Restorer, Damien Peduto. You want to do a minimum of repair. You, you, you want to make sure that the, that the repair that you do is easy to reverse. In case in the future they come up with a better way to do the restoration, then it'll be easy for them to get back to zero. And thirdly, a museum visitor should be unaware of any uh, restoration or any damage. It should look, just look normal to them. That's good. But if you want to make sure that, that, that should there be an expert who wants to examine the lamp closely, they can see exactly what you've done to it. So they know what's original and what's been restored. Okay, we're gonna try, where's that point of impact? Once the lamp arrives at the studio, it undergoes a careful examination, which can take days. The restorers are seeking to reconstruct not only the lamp, but its history. How many times was it damaged, and in what ways? How many times was it repaired? By whom? And how well? And when we first examined the lamp, we felt that it had been sent back to Tiffany Studios for one restoration and they had done some minor restoration. Then at a, a later point, the lamp was severely damaged and another person, certainly not from Tiffany Studios, did that restoration and he did a very bad job. And then thirdly, there was another restoration done. Once again, a very minor restoration. And this one was done relatively well. So this part here is good. This part's gonna have to be lifted, elevated a little bit up this way. And then here, Nicole, by the A and the A. Typical of a damaged lamp, the rim is out of alignment. Okay, this, this part here is good. A this series of measurements taken of the shade's diameter okay. also indicate that it is severely out of round by as much as two inches in one area. It looks like we found the possible point of the first impact. It's right in here at this 25 and a half inch dimension. Distortions of this kind are okay, must so fixes for the restoration team. A distorted shade will never hang correctly and its misshapen appearance will detract significantly from museum goers' appreciation of its other qualities. A bright side light or raking light helps the restorers identify past repairs by highlighting irregularities in the lamp's surface. Among the findings, numerous broken glass tiles and a large number of false lead lines or Dutchmen all around the lamp. This was intended to be As the restorer's knife demonstrates, this line of solder does not join two pieces of glass as the others do. Instead, it has been applied to the surface of a single piece of glass to hide a crack. And you can see how the blade goes right under it. This will have to be replaced. In the typical lamp, the solder was finished with copper electroplating and treated to give it a rich bronze patina or antique finish. The new Stad Museum decided that the Dutchmen which lay under the copper plating and patination were probably applied at Tiffany Studios 
and so would remain on the lamp. Those which showed a different patination were apparently made later by someone else. Tiffany Studios, Tiffany Studios, not Tiffany Studios. These would be removed and the glass beneath them replaced. Exactly why Tiffany Studios would have allowed any Dutchman would be determined later. Meanwhile, before work proceeds, the lamp is given a thorough but gentle bath. When the lamps were patinated, they were finished with a clear coating. Research has shown that at various times during the years of production, Tiffany Studios used nitrocellulose lacquer, Damar varnish, or even shellac. If this protective coating were to be dissolved by an aggressive solvent, the underlying patina would discolor and might deteriorate. So the technician uses no solvents, but a mild cleaning solution. Then the lamp is rinsed with deionized water until the water runs clear. Later, members of the team create a detailed map of the lamp, assigning a number to each piece, while others search for replacement glass. It is often a tedious and frustrating search, but not this time. It was a curious thing. We, we found there was a lot of the flower petal glass, both in the museum's collection and my own. And flower petal Tiffany glass is very rare. You, you, you never see any of it, at least not in sheet form. We wondered why there was so much of this glass left. We'd never seen this glass used in any other lamps before, and that was curious. Two mysteries now remain to be solved, and then a third came to light during the mapping process. Like most floral lamps, this design is based on a repeating pattern, in this case, repeated three times. But while tracing the lamp, the team found that a large flower petal, number A89, had been reversed when it was installed, affecting all the other pieces around it. The curious thing is then that rather than remove the piece and put it in straight, what they did at Tiffany Studios was they trimmed all the other pieces around it. And then where there was areas where there was no glass, they just filled it in with lead. It's made no sense. That led us to think that maybe this was a, 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 a possible prototype of this pattern. The glass remains today as it was originally installed, and the reason for its placement remains a mystery. So we're looking for B370. The arduous task of choosing new glass to replace specific pieces is much more than simple color matching. Leaves are not simply green, petals not simply yellow or orange or red. For this is a Tiffany lamp, and every unique piece of glass was chosen to create an effect, chosen by one of a special group at Tiffany Studios, the glass selector. We try to climb into his head and see what he had in mind. What is he trying to achieve? What time of day are we talking about? What's the season of the year? That is, and, and is that, in fact, constant around the, throughout the lamp? Or does the, the lamp change from a sunny morning to a, a stormy afternoon? That one looks good. Yeah, there we go. There Did he want this petal to look like it had just opened? Or is it in its, its glory right now? Is it in shadow? Does the leaf perhaps go behind it? How realistic did, did the selector want the lamp to be? Was it supposed to be impressionistic? Because Tiffany Studios used a lot of impressionist ideas in the designing of their, their objects. After identifying several options for each piece to be replaced, the restorers begin removing broken glass and bad repairs. Okay. At this stage, they are concerned with restoring the lamp to its proper shape. Often, by removing a sufficient number of pieces, the lamp will resume its original shape without further effort. The removed pieces are carefully washed then they are set out on the numbered pattern. Should a satisfactory replacement not be found, an original piece may have to be cemented and returned to the lamp. 
To make an individual repair, each piece of potential replacement glass is held to the opening left by the piece removed. It is turned and moved, rotated and repositioned, as the restorer searches for the one tiny section that makes the best match and sits in well with the surrounding pieces. A rough outline is drawn on the fragment. At the cutting bench, a pattern is made from the original broken piece, now cemented together. There are other techniques for patterns, including making a rubbing of the lamp, but this method is the most precise. It was during the painstaking cutting and soldering process that the restorers found a possible reason for the large existing supply of the unique pedal glass. Because it was so difficult to work with. The glass is very brittle, very, very difficult to cut. And once it's cut and set in place, the heat of the soldering iron cracks it. So we, we assume that they, they, while they made a lot of this glass, hoping that it would be useful, when the time came to use it, they realized it was almost impossible to use it. The pieces of glass must be soldered into place. And because solder does not stick to glass, the restorers tightly wrap each piece around the edges with copper foil. They use the method originally used at Tiffany Studios, slicing sheets of copper foil into strips on a scored brass plate. Today, foil comes in pre-cut, pre-pasted rolls that are more convenient, but the adhesive would make any restoration less easy to undo. Working with the glass also helped explain why Tiffany Studios would allow so many false lead lines in this oriental poppy lamp. Now, normally, when, when you make a lamp, a few pieces of glass do crack, and so when the lamp is finished, you'll go around it and you'll replace those cracked pieces with, with new pieces. But apparently at Tiffany Studios, they realized that no matter how much they tried to repair, the, replace these pieces, they cracked again. So finally they made the decision to just hide those cracks with false lead lines. Having developed a technique for cutting and soldering the delicate petal glass, the restorers begin to replace the damaged pieces and the less than perfect repairs of the past. The new glass first is positioned with small tabs of solder. Then the craftsmen go over each section, filling in the seams. This step looks deceptively simple, yet it requires a careful control that can only be achieved with years of experience. Later, the solder will be patinated to closely match the original but in such a way that the repairs can be identified upon close inspection. And so the Oriental Poppy, like other works in the Neustadt collection, regains its former splendor. Thanks to the commitment and approach to conservation adopted by the Neustadt Museum, this lamp and other objects so restored are now on display for the admiration of the public and scholars of the decorative arts. <laughs>